Hey folks, this is James Tracy, MemoryHoleBlog.com, and I wanted to begin a new venture today that I'm going to try to be as consistent as possible on, and that is having a news headline summary, which I found very useful for many years when um, the alternative media outlets that I have followed had this kind of overview of the news that you might be able to listen to when you're driving when you're doing work around the house or whatever the case may be. I've always found these really, really helpful and um, to keep up to date on things. And of course, this can't be a comprehensive thing. I can't cover all the news, but what I want to do is try to cover the things that I deem to be some of the most important and compelling things. Not necessarily sensationalistic or anything like that, just significant for us and the stories will generally speak for themselves. So why don't we begin, and some of these I've, I've kind of culled over the past few days, and um, I hope to keep this under about 8 to 10 minutes. I was initially going to title this 5 and 5, 5 stories in 5 minutes. I don't know if we could actually do that, but this is sort of a pilot, so let's go ahead and see what we have here. First story is actually from a couple of days ago, Zero Hedge. Democrats fume, Democrats fume as DHS tackles Portland anarchy while well, Trump plans to send feds to major cities. It's a number of major cities. As Portland slips further into chaos amid the seventh week of nightly protests, local and state officials have slammed the Trump administration for sending Homeland Security agents to perform crowd control and arrest what DHS Secretary Chad Wolf described last week as lawless anarchists. You know, what's interesting here is that the um, major media are giving this very positive coverage from the standpoint of the protesters themselves, actually calling them protesters rather than, um, you know, violent uh, extremist uh, demonstrators uh, who are, you know, who are committing unlawful acts. The story continues, in response to the DHS presence, Oregon's Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum sued DHS and the Marshal Service and federal court over unidentified federal agents grabbing people off the streets of Portland without warning or explanation, without warrant, and without providing any way to determine who is directing this action. Well, what sort of courtesy do these uh, demonstrators actually give uh, when they go to, for example, set fire to the um, police union hall? Uh, or other facilities, or storm the the federal uh, courthouse. Uh, there's there's no sort of courtesy. We're going to go ahead and and do these things, this this practice, or or that sort of thing, this sort of maneuver, that sort of maneuver. Um, why should they be necessarily given that type of type of courtesy? And also, given the fact that the local authorities are not doing anything in terms of quelling uh, this unrest, if anything, they're actually encouraging it by doing nothing and not lifting a finger. Another story here uh, from uh, Michael Snyder and his End of the American Dream blog came out a couple of days ago as well, actually July 19th. China's brutal persecution of Christians has taken a really bizarre turn. And he points out uh, a, um, he, he reads, or he rather highlights a, an article from uh, Bitter Winter magazine. Religious Liberty magazine Bitter Winter reports that in April of this year, Officials with China's Communist Party visited believers' homes in Linfen, a prefecture-level city in the northern province of Shaanxi. While there, they ordered residents who received social welfare payments from the government to replace crosses, religious symbols, and images in their homes with portraits of China's communist leaders, if you can believe that. If Christians resisted the order, officials annulled their subsidies, their government subsidies. Their welfare payments are the equivalent. Quote, all impoverished households in the town were told to display mousy tongue images, a local pastor told Bitter Winter. The government is trying to eliminate our belief and wants to become God instead of Jesus. In other words, the communist Chinese government intends to replace religion and specifically Christianity in the hearts of people. And, uh, of course, if some of these... Uh, these extremists in the streets actually do get their way and, and somehow seize power alongside the Democratic Party, which is also condoning, if not supporting, the activity here in our streets in major cities in the United States. We could see very similar programs afoot. In fact, actually, the major corporations like Google and Facebook and Twitter and PayPal 
already do have kind of a social credit system underway against American citizens is not being carried out by the, by the federal government or by state governments, but it's rather being carried out uh, by, these, uh, by these powerful corporations. Next story, uh, California court upholds verdict in Monsanto cancer case. California appeals court on Monday upheld a groundbreaking verdict that Monsanto's widely used weed killer caused cancer in a school groundskeeper, but the panel also slashed the damage award from $78.5 million to $21.5 million. Now, originally, this this um, award was, I believe, it was $289 million, and it's been reduced, it's been reduced, it's been reduced. Anyway, the First District Court of Appeals said there was evidence to support a California jury's 2018 decision that Monsanto acted with conscious disregard for public safety but reduced the damages to Dwayne Johnson of Vallejo because state law doesn't allow damages for reduced life expectancy, the San Francisco Chronicle reported. And also, the, the you know, as I was saying, the original award was almost $290 million. That was reduced by a judge to $78.5 million, and now it's, it's reduced to one-tenth of, of what it, more than one-tenth of what it originally was. Um, and uh, in further reducing the total award, the appellate court ruled three to zero that state law entitled Johnson only, only to compensation for future harm he was reasonably certain to suffer, and he's only been given two to three years to live. Now, it, it's amazing that this case has gotten this far uh, because I, I know being involved in complex litigation, how much it costs actually to proceed. Uh, in a uh, in, in a legal action, especially against a major entity like Monsanto or stay, you know, a, a state or government entity, because they they essentially have bottomless pockets and resources that they can throw at you, and um, their legal team is top notch and so forth. Anyway, the lawyer for uh, Dwayne Johnson, R. Brent Wisner, says the ruling was an overall victory, but the court shouldn't have reduced the damage award. He says this effectively rewards a defendant for killing a plaintiff as opposed to just injuring him, Wisner told the San Francisco Chronicle. And, you know, even if the award was still $300 million, that's like a, it's a drop in the bucket for uh, a major, major entity like uh, Monsanto. They just write this stuff off as a, an expense of, of doing business. Next story from globalresearch.ca. Corruption in the medical field. U.S. doctors threatened over hydroxychloroquine use. Dr. Fauci is blotching, is, is blocking, excuse me, HCQ. There's an ongoing battle to suppress hydroxychloroquine, a cheap and effective drug for the treatment of COVID-19. And Dr. Anthony Fauci, everyone's favorite uh, public health doctor, Advise, advisor to the President Trump, uh, President Trump as well, has played a key role. On May 22nd, an authoritative peer-reviewed evaluation of HCQ was published in The Lancet, if you recall. The study was allegedly based on data analysis of over 96,000 patients hospitalized with COVID-19 from 671 hospitals worldwide. That database had been fabricated, and The Lancet, here's one of the leading uh, medical journals in the world. This Lancet study was retracted. The objective of that fake study quoted by the media, as well as Fauci, was to kill the hydroxychloroquine cure on behalf of Big Pharma, as well as Fauci, because he's gonna, he's definitely going to get kickbacks from something along these lines. The story continues, and now, as documented by Fox News, U.S. medical doctors are being threatened by the state medical licensing boards not to prescribe HCQ an effective treatment for COVID-19. 75,000 to 100,000 lives would have been saved if the ban on HCQ is lifted, said Yale professor of epidemiology, Dr. Harvey Risch. And there's also a media blackout on HCQ. Uh, so much corruption in the medical field when it comes to bureaucrats, says Dr. Rich. And uh, that's R-I-S-C-H. This, uh, this story it was uh, reported on by Fox News, and it continues, Dr. Fauci had earlier stated categorically that the use of HCQ had not been studied in relation to the coronavirus. No proven drug, in quotes, not enough known. That's a false statement. These are all remarks made by Fauci, who, of course, has the biggest megaphone in the, uh, in, in the country, in, in North America. 
What Fauci failed to mention is that that the chloroquine has been tested was tested 15 years ago by the CDC as a drug to be used against coronavirus infections. This is well known. It's certainly well known by Fauci. Extremely disingenuous of him to uh, come out and make these remarks. That story once again from Global Research. Another one here from the Washington Free Beacon. Planned Parenthood renounces racist eugenicist founder Margaret Sanger. Finally, Planned Parenthood of Greater New York renounced racist and eugenicist founder Margaret Sanger on Tuesday, as July 21st, for her harmful connection to the eugenics movement. A quote from the New York Times, The removal of Margaret Sanger's name from our building is both a necessary and overdue step to reckon with our legacy and acknowledge Planned Parenthood's contributions to historical reproductive harm within communities of color, unquote. That once again, excuse, from the, uh, the chair of the New York Affiliates Board by the name of, a woman by the name of Karen Seltzer, said in a statement to the New York Times, a spokeswoman for Planned Parenthood said that the organization's national leadership also approved of the decision. The decision marks a historic about-face by the organization, which has routinely defended Sanger's legacy. As recently as 2016, Planned Parenthood published a fact sheet that said her racist statements should be overshadowed by her, quote, worldwide renowned respect and admiration for founding the American birth control movement, unquote. Planned Parenthood acknowledged that she touted her efforts to reduce the Negro population at a Ku Klux Klan meeting, but maintained that she was motivated by passion rather than racism. And passion being in quotes. The abortion provider also criticized its founder for endorsing mass sterilization for the disabled, a view it defended in 2016 because, quote, she agreed with the progressives of her day, unquote. <laughs> Next story from uh, The Mind Unleashed from July 20th. Leaked documents show DHS is afraid that masks will make facial recognition useless. That's right. In a collection of law enforcement documents released by Blue Leaks, researchers found a Department of Homeland Security Intelligence memo where the agency expressed concern about the potential problem that mask wearing could cause for facial recognition technology. The note, which was published on May 22nd, discussed what the agency described as the potential impacts that widespread use of protective masks could have on security operations that incorporate face recognition systems such as video cameras, image processing hardware and software, and image recognition algorithms to monitor public spaces during the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency and in the months after the pandemic subsides. The memo went on to suggest that violent extremists and other criminals who have historically maintained an interest in avoiding face recognition are likely to opportunistically seize upon public safety measures recommending the wearing of face masks to hinder the effectiveness of face recognition systems in public spaces by security partners. Now, just an aside here, it's always um, struck me as interesting that these these uh, mandatory face mask measures are coming, are going in. Um, they're being essentially um, deployed by state governments and regions, you know, municipalities around the country where at the same time in many cities we have Antifa, we have Black Lives Matter, and some of these anarchists, these extremists, these communists rely on what? They rely on face masks to remain anonymous. So if this heats up further and in other areas of the country, how are we going to be able to tell the difference between a, pro, a, a protester or someone who has violent intent and someone who's just an everyday citizen is trying to be a good citizen by wearing a face mask uh, in accord with public health measures? Next story, the World Health Organization is using funds to hire celebrity influencers to shove COVID-19 propaganda down our throats. This is from Natural News. In a desperate attempt at salvaging its failed reputation, the World Health Organization has partnered up with a high-powered public relations firm to have celebrities push WHO-approved Wuhan coronavirus COVID-19 propaganda on the masses. On May 1st, 
The Who signed a $135,000 contract with Hill & Knowlton Strategies. Hill & Knowlton, isn't that the same company that brought us the Gulf War in 1990-1991? Hill & Knowlton Strategies to seek out celebrity influencers who might be effective at convincing the skeptics that the Who and the United Nations at large are still somehow relevant and trustworthy. According to documents recently filed by the DOJ, the Department of Justice, the WHO is specifically seeking out celebrities with more than one million followers on social media, as these types of influencers will have the greatest reach, especially among young people. There has been criticism and assertions leveled against the World Health Organization and media coverage that could undermine WHO as a trusted and critical information source on global public health issues, public relations firm Hill and Knowlton acknowledged in a statement. And finally, uh, from RT, although this, this story has been covered, um, it's been reported on today, July 22nd, generally all around in, in major media uh, and as, as well as alternative media. Twitter bans QAnon activity and content in a sweeping censorship move bringing national attention to fringe conspiracies. Twitter has announced a mass ban for thousands of profiles linked to the so-called QAnon community and any related content citing potential offline harm, but critics insist the purge will only raise the movement's profile. The social media giant said it would permanently suspend accounts that share content associated with the conspiracy-minded community, arguing such posts could lead to real-world harm, though it did not explain how. The sweeping ban will affect up to 150,000 accounts, 7,000 of which have already been wiped out away from the site, uh, the Twitter site. NBC News reported on the evening of July 21st. It states, it states um, the company said, Twitter said, we've been clear that we will take strong enforcement action on behavior that has the potential to lead to offline harm in line with the approach this week, we are taking further action on so-called QAnon activity across the service, the company said in a tweet, uh, as well as blocking URLs associated with QAnon from being shared on Twitter. But of course, I'm sure that uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa uh, accounts and those accounts supportive of, uh, of those entities and supportive of anarchist and anarchist activity and vandalism and so forth, um, all of those uh, accounts are welcome to stay on Twitter and Facebook and, uh, and elsewhere. Anyway, that is um, an overview of the news, uh, kind of a, a pilot production today. If you like it, uh, please leave a thumbs up or and provide commentary as to what you'd like to see if you think that it is helpful. Um, we'd appreciate any type of feedback that you have. And uh, until next time, this is uh, James Tracy signing off. Bye-bye.